get around? On your bike, skateboard or public transport? There are many ways to get places nowadays, but do you know what the inside of a plane looks like? Or what the world's biggest cruise ship is? How a hot air balloon works? And how fast a jet can go? Stick around and find out the answers to all these burning questions and many more on Why, What, Where. What is the name of the world's biggest cruise ship? Have you ever stepped aboard a ship? Perhaps you've been on a sailboat before or seen a cruise ship at a docking harbour. Well, imagine stepping aboard the biggest cruise ship in the world. On it, you'll find an ice skating rink, a full-size rock climbing wall, Main Street shopping promenade and an inline skating track. There's even a wave current that lets you surf or boogie board on board, a water-themed fun park, a full-size boxing ring and water sports pool. There's volleyball, basketball and even a gym. Oh, and you can get your hair cut at a barber's shop. It would be a pretty wild experience, huh? Do you want to know the name of the ship? It's called the Freedom of the Seas and it weighs 160,000 tonnes and is more than 1,100 feet long, bigger than the Eiffel Tower. One day you could be one of the 4,375 passengers on board this huge vessel, which was built in Finland. There are more than 1,800 rooms, almost twice as many as the largest hotel in Europe. There are shopping malls, bars and restaurants, theatres and nightclubs. The ship cruises to many exotic places, like the Caribbean. One of the two pools of the Freedom of the Seas is used mostly just for athletic pool games like synchronised swimming. Other times there are lanes that you can do lap swimming in and the second pool is just for relaxing. At night, passengers can see this area turned into an open-air nightclub where guests can have a boogie. What is the world's fastest cruise ship? The Royal Olympic Cruises Olympic Voyager. Why did the Titanic sink? Do you know the famous story of the Titanic disaster? It was a very tragic and sad event that has made a big impact on our history. The Titanic was a magnificent liner which set sail on April 10, 1912 from Southampton in England, destined for New York. It never arrived. I bet you're wondering what happened, right? Well, the Titanic suffered a massive collision with an iceberg that sunk the ship, killing 1,500 of the 2,200 passengers and crew in the icy seas. What was so hard to believe about the catastrophe was that the Titanic was believed to be unsinkable. But four days after setting sail, this theory turned out to be untrue. In fact, it took only two hours and 40 minutes to sink. The closest ship in the area, the Carpathia, received distress calls from the Titanic and responded immediately that they were coming to rescue the sinking ship. But sadly, they didn't get there in time. By the time Carpathia arrived, just before dawn, all that was left to be seen were lifeboats, bodies and mess from the ship. For many years, no one knew exactly where on the ocean floor the Titanic had come to rest. It wasn't until 1985 that the Titanic wreck was discovered. The bow and the stern of the ship were found almost 2,000 feet apart. Now scientists and researchers have found more items from the ship's wreckage, which give them more idea about the people who were on the ship, what they were doing and what they had with them. These days, some items from the ship fetch tens of thousands of dollars at auctions. Letters written by passengers on board bearing the Titanic postmark sparked a lot of interest at this New York auction. A lot containing Titanic stationery, along with some photographs, went for 40,000 US dollars. What is the famous movie about the disaster starring Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio? Titanic, directed by James Cameron. What does a husky pull? Husky is a general term for several breeds of dogs that are trained by people to pull sleighs through the snow. 
Sleighs, which can also be called sleds or sledges, are vehicles that don't have any wheels. Instead, they slide on runners, which help them go over snow or ice or land by means of harnesses and lines. The husky dog must have to be pretty strong, don't you think, to pull the sleighs? They also have to travel long distances and travel at a good speed. Huskies pull various sorts of sleighs, from small ones to large ones, and they often work in teams of three or more. Husky racing has become a popular recreational activity in Europe. It's fast and may look dangerous to you, but this brave youngster says that people very rarely fall off. It's scary and you feel like you're going to fall off, but you don't really unless if you don't like, hold, hold on to the handlebars. There is also bobsleigh racing, which is believed to have started in Switzerland in the late 1800s. But there is also evidence of this type of racing on wooden sleighs that started up in parts of North America in the 1880s. Did you know that bobsleigh racing is now a sport in the Olympics? But mostly, people use sleighs for fun. The point of this race in Germany is to get down the slope in the shortest possible time, using original, old, traditional sleighs. There are no brakes to help you slow down if you happen to be going too fast. Once the sleigh flies over the jump, there's nothing but a little snow to help cushion the fall. The horn sledge was used in the past for transporting wood and hay down to the valley. Did you know that there are four types of sleighs commonly used today? Discs, toboggans, tubes and runner sleds. Coming up, we find out where you can find a rickshaw and how hot air balloons work. Where can you find a rickshaw? You may have heard of a rickshaw before, but if it doesn't sound familiar, let's see if we can jog your memory. Rickshaws have a two-wheeled cart which seats one or two people and a person, known as a runner, pulls it. The word rickshaw comes from Asia, where this type of transport was used mainly for the rich and famous. It means human-powered vehicle, and in more recent times, rickshaws have been banned from use in many countries in Asia due to numerous accidents. Runner-pulled rickshaws have mainly been replaced in Asia by bicycle rickshaws, but you can also find them in other places, like India and New York City. In London, they're called a different name, pedicabs, Petty referring to pedestrian, which means a person walking on foot. Did you know that one of the reasons rickshaws were so popular to begin with was that human labour was a lot cheaper than using horses? When were bicycles invented? How well can you ride a bike? Often when people are learning how to ride bikes, they attach an extra set of wheels or stabilisers at the back. Bicycles, bikes or cycles are pedal-driven, human-powered vehicles with two wheels attached to a frame, one behind the other. A person who rides a bicycle is called a cyclist or a bicyclist. Bikes were introduced in the 19th century, in 1885 to be exact, and are now so popular that there are about one billion worldwide. They are the main means of transportation in many places, and people also use them to get fit or just to have fun. Some people use them to drop off things like people's mail and packages, and they're also used in competitive sports. You probably think that bikes have changed a lot since the first chain-driven model was developed. Well, actually, that's not the case. Many details have been improved, such as the design and features on the bike, but the overall shape and function remains pretty much the same. Bicycles play an important part in the way we operate in society. They're not just used for getting places or for work and recreational reasons. They're even used in entertainment and performances and are very popular with circus clowns. There are even bicycles which have two and three seats so either two or three people can ride the same bike at the same time. You can change gears on bikes too. For example, you can use a high gear when going downhill, a medium gear when cycling on a flat road, and a low gear when cycling uphill, which makes it easier. Riding your bike is better for the environment than travelling in a car, so try and encourage your family and friends to use a bike 
rather than a car to get around. Did you know that the first five-seat bicycle called the Quindam was built in 1940? How do hot air balloons work? Now let's look at the oldest successful human carrying flight technology, the hot air balloon. On November 21st, 1783 in Paris, France, two French men in a hot air balloon made the first manned flight. How on earth do you think it works? Well, it was discovered that a fabric bag filled with hot air would rise. So a hot air balloon consists of a bag called the envelope that can carry contained heated air. Hanging beneath it is the gondola or wicker basket, which carries the passengers and usually a source of heat. The heated air inside the envelope makes the hot air balloon float since it's lighter than the cold air outside the envelope. The balloon is not like a gas balloon, which would need to be sealed at the bottom, and this is because the air near the bottom of the envelope is at the same pressure as the surrounding air. You'd think, though, that the flame would set the material of the balloon's envelope alight, but it doesn't because it's made from nylon fabric and the part of the balloon closest to the burner of the flame is made from a fire-resistant material which protects it. Usually, hot air balloons are kind of round in shape, but you can also find novelty balloons shaped like hot dogs and rocket ships. The longest time that a hot air balloon flight has lasted is 50 hours and 38 minutes. Sometimes you can see hot air balloons in the sky early on a cold morning. This is because on a warm day, a balloon cannot lift as much as on a cool day. In the early days, balloons without any passengers were sent up. After that, they tried sending animals of all sorts up, like a sheep, rooster and duck, to see how well the balloon worked. Balloons have played an important role in science as they've helped to study the weather and the atmosphere. What should you wear and take with you on a hot air balloon ride? Dress like a hiker, pants, shirt, jacket and carry a camera and lots of film. What is biofuel? There are lots of complicated transport terms, especially to do with fuel, oil and energy. Biofuel is great for the environment and worth knowing about. But firstly, let's talk a little about oil and how it was formed to get a better idea of what biofuel is. Oil was formed from the remnants of animals and plants that lived millions of years ago in a water environment before the dinosaurs. Over the years, the remains were covered in layers of mud and heat and pressure helped turn this into crude oil. The word petroleum, which petrol is short for, means oil from the earth. Oil is a smelly yellow to black liquid and is usually found underground. Products from oil help us do many things. It gives us fuel for our aeroplanes, cars and trucks, helps heat our homes and make products like medicine and plastics. Even though it makes life easier, it can also be bad for the environment. Biodiesel, on the other hand, is made from vegetable oils and animal fats. It can be used instead of diesel fuel, which is one of the types of fuels. Most trucks, buses and tractors in the United States use diesel fuel, but by using biodiesel, they can use a little bit less petrol, which ends up causing less pollution. Any vehicle that operates on diesel fuel can use biodiesel without making any changes to its engine. Because it's so clean burning and easy to use, biodiesel is the fastest growing fuel for many transportation vehicles and it saves money too. Did you know that sometimes biodiesel smells like french fries? What is a classic car? We all know what cars look like. In fact, you probably get driven to school in one or get taken places by a car on the weekend. But there are different types of cars and they range in shape, size and cost. A classic car is a term used to describe an older style car. The Classic Car Club of America states that 1959 is the latest year that a car can have been made in order to be considered a true classic. But not everyone agrees with that. 
Drivers of classic cars must be especially careful, as these old vehicles often don't have what we now know of as basic safety features, such as seat belts. Japan is one of the world's leading and forward-thinking car manufacturing countries. But even though the Japanese love new concepts, there is also lots of interest in classic cars. Have you heard of a Mercedes? What about a Rolls-Royce or a Bugatti? These are some well-known, elegant and stylish cars that people love and admire. What is a vintage car? A car built between the start of 1919 and the end of 1930. Coming up, we find out how fast a jet can go and what the inside of a plane looks like. How fast can a jet fly? Have you ever seen a jet fly? They can't flap their wings like a bird, but they do have large wings that are specially shaped so they can fly without flapping. Their engines give them power. The jet engine pulls air into itself, then rushes it out the back. This pushes the jet through the air, and the wings are designed to make the air go faster over the top, which helps the aircraft move faster and higher by creating low pressure. Jet aircrafts can move faster than sound. How fast do you think that is? Well, in fact, it varies. But in dry, warm air, sound travels at around 768 miles per hour. America's space agency, NASA, has a jet called the NASA X-43A, which flies almost 10 times that speed at about 7,300 miles per hour. This is one of the fastest speeds for a jet. But the fastest jet ever flown by a human is the SR-71 Blackbird. Jets fly higher and faster than normal planes and are generally much smaller. The first air jet was believed to be designed on paper in 1929 by Frank Whittle of the British Royal Air Force. But it wasn't until 1939 that Eric Warsitz piloted the first turbine jet plane on August 27. True or false, the AH-1 Cobra is a helicopter, not a jet. True, it's a helicopter. When was the first train built? You've probably been on a train before, and if not, you're sure to have seen one with passengers on board travelling through the city or the countryside. In fact, trains are now so common it's hard to believe that people once thought they were too dangerous. People once feared that the air would be sucked out of their lungs when travelling at such a speed. Some also thought travelling on trains would cause mental problems. Crazy, huh? George and Robert Stevenson built the first safe train in England in 1829. And in 1868, the railroad was built all across America. The first diesel and electric trains were invented in the 1950s. Now there are loads of different trains. Passenger trains, short distance trains that serve cities and suburbs, long distance trains that travel from city to city or country to country. You can sleep on these types of trains and enjoy a meal. There are also freight trains which carry goods and materials. In the United States of America, trains are actually used more for transporting freight than passengers. The world's very first subway system was located in London and it opened in 1863. A subway is a place where trains pull up on underground platforms. Passengers use subways either to get to their final destination or to take them to the train station or airport where they can take another mode of transport. Did you know that the largest train station in the world is Grand Central in New York? It has 44 platforms. Where can you find the Orient Express? Many years ago, a special train inspired a world-famous writer for her crime books. The writer's name was Agatha Christie and the train was called the Orient Express. Agatha Christie was fascinated with train travel. In fact, she spent her honeymoon in 1930 on board the train and one of her most famous works is called Murder on the Orient Express. 
The Orient Express started out as a long-distance passenger train and has changed routes many, many times. It started in Europe and is now considered to be a very luxurious way of travelling and has an air of mystery surrounding it. It didn't start running until 1883 and ran from Paris to Romania through places like Vienna and Budapest. The Simplon Tunnel, the world's longest at 12 and a half miles, was built in 1906, which cut down the length of the trip from Paris to Venice. And by 1921, the Orient Express was running an extended Simplon Orient Express route to Istanbul. There have been many films and television shows about or featuring the Orient Express. The legendary train had its heyday in the 1920s and 1930s when royalty, celebrities and even spies travelled on it, enjoying the famous train's elaborate meals and fine wines. The train stopped running during World War II and after that train travel became less and less popular. Air travel was becoming faster and cheaper and in 1977 the Orient Express stopped running. But an entrepreneur and lover of all things railway, James B. Sherwood, saved it. He spent lots of time and money restoring the train, and in 1982, the line was brought back to life when the Venice Simplon Orient Express made its run from London to Venice. Today, you can find the Orient Express line in many parts of the world, not just Europe. There is the Eastern and Oriental Express in Southeastern Asia, the Great South Pacific Express in Australia and the Road to Mandalay in Burma. Did you know that 19 books have been written about the train as well as a piece of music called Orient Express Variations? What does the inside of a plane look like? If you have ever wondered what the inside of a plane looks like, then this exhibition in Germany will give you all the answers. But be warned, this cabin is a new design that hasn't been released yet. So don't be disappointed if you happen to catch a plane to a city or country and it doesn't look like this. In this new plane, there are luxury seating pods, intimate dining areas, comfy beds and other features to make your journey as relaxing as possible. This is the Airbus A380 model cabin. It has straight side walls which provide more head and shoulder room and wider seats, making it the widest cabin ever. The A380 is as tall as a seven-storey building and can seat more than 800 passengers. It takes many years to design and plan an aircraft. This is because many safety tests need to be done to make sure there are no accidents once it goes up in the air. However, most aeroplanes look almost identical. Rows of seats on either side and sometimes in the middle. There's usually a television screen where you can watch movies, especially on longer flights. Who flew the first aeroplane? Orville and Wilbur Wright in December 1903. There are so many different ways to get around. The history of travel is rich and exciting and full of many wonderful stories as to how, why, what and where our various modes of transport were discovered and developed.